How's it going everybody? Winter time, which means lots of saw shop time. I know some of you guys have been craving uh, some bench work, some bench videos. Well, winter time is a time of sitting at the bench here. That's how I originally got into chainsaws. The winters here are long and cold. And uh, as long as you got a good wood stove and some firewood, it's nice to get away into the old saw shop and work on some chainsaws. That's what originally started me with this hobby. And of course, as time has gone on, I started doing it on YouTube and the rest is history. Today's video, I know you guys have been waiting for this. Let's start putting back together the MS-460. I'll show you guys my port work again and I'll give you guys some tips and tricks on when you're putting your top end together, how to ensure that you're gonna be successful in your build. And also, I get this question all the time. One ring versus two. Can you use one ring? Where do you put the ring? What are the positives and negatives of one ring? So let's get into that. Let's get back to the bench. Okay, so we have basically all the parts we need to put the top end together. I clean my bench, my tools, everything when I'm putting a bottom end together. I want everything as spick and span as possible. That includes washing my hands and just generally making sure that this saw, the first 30 seconds of this saw's life could make or break it. Especially if you have dirt in your cylinder or in your bottom end and that ends up going through, your fresh rebuild job can look horrible pretty quick. So that's the number one thing. Clean everything. Make sure everything's super, super spick and span. Okay, here's the cylinder. Main work I did was to the transfers. Lower transfers have been widened about to the tip of my finger out. When I noticed with this saw with the big bore on it, it really seemed to be gasping for air at high RPM. Didn't seem to want to live there. Well, when I pulled it apart, I realized that the windows and the piston are blocked to like here because the transfers are so narrow. Anything that stifles airflow is going to rob power, so be aware of that. Now, you have to be careful when you're doing work like this. This is extreme. You have to make sure you don't get too close to your intake or what will happen is you won't seal right here, okay? There's my intake. I widened it out. Put those ears, one on each side, to help direct air around the crankshaft and lowered it some. Okay, there's the exhaust port right here. It's polished. Now this exhaust port is stock height. I did not move it up. I wanted to show you guys that you don't have to change the timing numbers a bunch. Okay, this saw now has 100 on the exhaust. That's where it opens stock. 124 on the transfers. And one. 52 on the intake and look lots of texture in that intake. I really roughed it up I want to see if I can go too rough because I know this is always a point of Conjecture with people. So look at that. Look at those ribs in there. It's super rough. I Wonder I guess we'll find out when we run this saw Yeah, okay, I have everything laid out on the bench that we need. No, this isn't a twin cylinder I'm showing you my modded piston versus a stock out of the box piston these are both meteor pistons and uh i really like meteor i've been running them for years i get them from ryan at wolf creek saw shop oem cylinder this cylinder i have i'm 99 percent sure the guy changed it because he thought he lost compression the decomp was leaking horribly so i always run decomp plugs i won't send a saw out of here with a decomp in it uh that's just me and again, we got our Meteor Circlip. This is a caber ring. We're going to use that in this build. And uh, I think it's going to be good. Before I get to the meat and potatoes, what I want to show you guys in this video. If you have a cylinder off a bottom end for a while, uh, make sure you stuff rags in there. And when you take the rags out, blow compressed air in there. Make sure it's good and clean so that you don't have any issues with debris getting up into your brand new top end. And then clean the flanges. Uh, I clean them with brake clean. I scrub them down. Same with the cylinder. And that way you know that your glue. In this case, I get asked this a lot. This is what I use. Moto Seal. Gasket maker. Okay. 
been using that for years. If you prep your surfaces and you don't dry it in the cold, this stuff, I've never had a failure with it. Okay, so today's video, I want to put this top end on. I get asked this all the time. Can you run one ring on a two ring piston? Here's a two ring piston. And the answer to that is 100% yes. Okay. And you run it like this. I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys straight up because I get asked this probably once a week. Okay. Put your ring over. Okay. Here's your ring. Now you want to run this like this one ring. Okay. I always run single rings on pretty much every piston that comes out of this shop. I only run one ring. Okay, but you always want to run it on the top. I've been asked that, and that's not a silly question. Just think about it this way. If your ring builds compression, if you put it on the lower, you're actually lessening how much you compress that charge on the upstroke. So think of it that way. Now, why do you run one ring? Why do I do it? Well, think of it this way. If you have two rings in between here and there, you don't have oil in between the two rings which creates heat that is the main reason why i do it also lighter weight on the piston uh, less friction usually lower heat i mean i think one ring is a good thing do you lose a little bit of compression sure but i don't think that little bit of compression you may or may not lose makes up for what you get from it uh, less friction is a good thing it it just it makes Less friction makes less heat, and in an air-cooled motor, heat is 100% the enemy, especially in a production saw that you're porting. Can you run two rings? Sure. But I always run one, and I've never had a problem doing that. Okay, so I have this cylinder, and I've cleaned it. What you want to do, or what, what I do, I just show you guys what I do. It's not the only way. Okay, I take this, run it in there. Look. See how clean that is? It's clean. That's how you know that your cylinder is ready to rock and roll. My piston, I have cleaned it several times. Okay, I'm just going to take this ring off here. Okay, I know this thing's shiny. All these edges have been dressed. They're all smooth. All these corners have been taken down. See how it's round now? I did the dome of the piston. Okay, every part of this piston has been worked on by me. That takes a lot of time, but I think it's worth it. You end up with a better saw when you're done, or at least I feel you do. Here's the stock piston. Here's the modded one. Notice the I cut into the piston skirt to make the windows bigger, creating more airflow and hopefully more fuel and air to the top of the cylinder on the downstroke. Okay. How much weight did we lose? I'll grab I'll grab my scale and weigh out of the box. Meteor to a Tin Man Eyes piston. Okay, here's the stock piston that I've modified. Okay, this is the one I ground on with the wrist pin. And I want to show you guys the finished assembly. Okay, and here's the one out of the box with the wrist pin in it. Okay, so the, we have five grams of difference. Not a huge amount. There's not a lot I can do to this piston. But opening those windows should really help with airflow. A lighter piston's a good deal no matter what. Five grams is five grams. So there you guys go. A little bit lighter. Okay, I know some of you have been dying for some old school Tin Man at the Bench content. So this one's for you guys. I'm going to sit here at the bench uh, and just film it. Let's talk and chat and have some fun. In the old days, this is what I used to do is I would just set up the camera and go. And uh, it kind of brings me back. So let's do that in this case. Okay, first things first, again, make sure all your mating surfaces are nice and clean. Make sure your cylinder's clean. Again, take a paper towel and rub it in there and make sure that paper towel comes out spick and span. If it does, you're probably pretty fair that your uh, cleaning did its job, okay? Um, I've already taken a feeler gauge and checked the ring gap, okay? Measure measure the gap in the rings. Uh, this one measures 12 thousandths. I'm good with that. You just don't want it too tight because if your ring expands, it can bind and you can end up blowing the saw up. Okay, so 
Let's get going on this. First things first, let's get these sir clips figured out. Decide what side basically that you want to put the wrist pin in on. I'm going to go from this side because this side's kind of hard to get in there. So that's the side, this side that I'm not putting the wrist pin in from. That's the side I'm going to put the first sir clip in. Again, let's try this. If you do this off camera, it literally takes two seconds. If you do it on camera, you're fighting it. That's just the way it goes. Oh. There, click. And again, I always give them a full rotation. Okay, I stick my screwdriver in there and I spin them around to make sure that they are fully in the groove. Now, I can see that this one is fully seated, but if you're worried about it, if you're worried about it being in the groove, take your screwdriver and spin it one full spin. And if it doesn't come out in that one full rotation, you should be good to go. I take a little tiny wee bit of two stroke oil and I put it on my wrist pin. I'm just gonna pause you guys and I'll do that. I forgot to put two stroke oil in a little container and then I dip my finger into there. Hold on. Okay, all I did is take a little bit of oil and put it on a rag. And then I'll just dip my finger into there. Okay, I just want to make sure there's oil on everything. That way, when the saw fires up, you're good to go. I'm going to take a little bit of oil, just on the end of my screwdriver, and I'm going to drop it into this wrist pin bearing, or a crank, or a rod bearing rather, okay? Just to make sure that there's oil on there. Not too much, just enough so that when we fire it up, it's not running dry. Okay, there we go. Okay, I got the wrist pin here. Line it up with the hole. There we go. Push it in all the way. Let's see if I can do this on film with my facing the wrong way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I think I'm going to lay this thing on the ground here. There we go. Boom. In they go. Okay, and I think it's good to go. And the beauty is... I install them with the opening to the bottom, so they're not going to go anywhere. Okay. There it is. I'm just going to make sure you guys are still... Okay, we're good. Let's move you guys back here a little bit. Okay, so we have that, that, that. Everything's put together. We put a little bit of oil on this ring, same as before. Okay. Make sure you line up the little, there's little round grooves machined at the ends. So that's for the locating pin. Make sure that you have those the right way. Okay. Okay, my hands are clean. Now, before I put my moto seal on, a little bit of brake clean. Okay, I'm just going to wipe this all down. Just want to make sure that that flange is super, super clean. Um, I've only had one knot stick in all the years I've been using Moto Seal, and that was one that I dried in the cold. And uh, it came it came loose about six months later. So okay, so this is all nice, ready to go. I'm gonna sit down at the bench here. Got a fresh tube of Moto Seal. Okay, I'm gonna take this. Now this stuff, don't use too much. Uh, less is better than more. Okay. And I'm just going to put a thin layer. And I use my finger. If you want to use a brush, that's fine too. I just find I use so many. Uh, for the longest time, I've put together so many saws that if I had to carry, if I had to carry brushes to do this too, it's just one more thing to have to go to the city to get. So I just use my finger. And again, it seems to, seems to work fine for me, but you can use a brush if you don't want this stuff on your finger. 
Okay, making sure that you don't get it inside of the saw. So one thing I've learned over the years, don't put this stuff on too thick, thin. Um, almost so you can see through it. That's no joke. Okay, move my piston. Okay, now I'll show you guys right up close here. Okay, just have a little bit on my finger. You guys see that? Okay, and you just do that with the whole cylinder. Trust me, it won't leak. Um, if you use too much, it ends up going inside of the saw. Makes a big mess, and really, it doesn't seal any better if it's on thick. When you reef it down, guess what? You're going to push all that stuff out of the way. Anyways, okay, now I'll take a rag, and I'll make sure that I didn't get any inside there. Now I know I did, because I can see it. But, okay, make sure that you didn't get any inside the saw, and just make sure you have a continuous bead all the way around. And you should be good to go. Now, working time with this stuff, put it together right away. It says to put it together right away and torque it down. So, all I'm going to do, I'm going to clean my hands up real fast. I'm going to wipe inside my cylinder again just to make sure there's nothing on there. It's clean. Now, I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to oil up the cylinder. Just with a little bit of oil, doesn't have to be too much, just enough that when we first pull the saw over, it's not going to be dry, okay? And again, I just have an oily, I poured a bunch of fresh oil on a clean piece of paper towel, and that's what I'm using. Again, if you want to put some on this piston, you can. doesn't hurt. Just don't have so much that it's going to drip down onto your fresh moto seal. Okay, now if you want to use a ring compressor, have at her. Um, those of you that have been around, I rarely use one, but that's also because I rarely use two rings. Okay, there we go. Push it all the way down. Just looking at something here. There we go. Push it all the way down. Cylinder bolts. I thought I saw something there that I didn't actually see. You ever do that? You ever put a saw together and be like, did I? Did I put circlips on that one side? I've done it, friends. That's actually a funny story. How did you start YouTubing, Tin Man? That's actually one of the ways I started YouTubing. I was filming myself putting stuff back together and, uh, so that I didn't forget parts. So what's going on here? I think this has to go in this way. You guys know me, I don't, uh, I'm not usually wrenching on steels here. What? Interesting, so this doesn't fit in there? See, normally with Huskies you just drop them in from the top. Uh, this saw, the heads on the, on the bolts are so big that you got to kind of feed them in there. There we go. There's one. Question is, can I get the other side in? Hey there, friends. Okay. I'm having... Did I have to put that in first? Seems kind of strange to me. There we go. Okay. The simplest answer is usually the correct one. Okay. Line this up. Start driving them home. Now, I don't snug them down right away. Just, just so they're touching. I want to get them all started. Let me see. You guys can see. I want to get them all started. Okay. Just so that they're touching. And what I'll usually do is move the saw around just so that the cylinder finds its home. If that makes sense. Just looking, the flywheel is super close to the cylinder. 
super close. I don't think it's rubbing though. We'll have a look at that after. If it is, I'm taking the flywheel off and I'll do a little massaging to it. I don't think it's touching though. Okay, let's put this down here. No, well, I'm gonna say that flywheel's not touching. I'm also getting blind up close, friends, so what looks like touching to me is not actually touching. <laughs> now that I look at it more. Okay, and then just snug it down. All four bolts right here in a cross pattern. Tight. I don't use a torque wrench if you want to. I just, I torque them tight. As tight as I can make them. Okay. There we go. Last thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a decomp in it. Just to cover all the holes. Make sure nothing can fall into here. And we'll call this a finished cylinder. Okay, I got a spark plug in there. Just a random spark plug, not the one I'm using. And a decomp. Now, these rings aren't seated or this ring isn't seated, but it feels good. Look through there, everything looks good on the piston, and uh, as this thing goes up and down more, these rings will just break in, and it'll do what it's going to do. I think this saw is going to be good. Now, what's left on this saw? Not really anything. This was a running saw when I took it apart. In the next video, we'll we'll put this thing back together, but i got to make a pipe ski for this thing, because uh, Caleb doesn't have a pipe saw, and I know he really wants one, so I'm going to do him a solid and build a pipe for this thing. Okay, you guys want to see my favorite part? Every saw I build. I'm going to stick my thumb over the impulse line. Okay. Trying not to get my fingers smashed. This thing's going to have lots of compression, I reckon. Um, so again, 100 on the exhaust, same as stock. I widened it some. Did upper transfer work, lower transfer work, just to create airflow. Intake timing is 152 now. It was, let me grab my book ski here. My intake timing was 144. So I added a healthy dose of intake timing. Part of it is to add more air and fuel to the bottom end. And part of it is to fill those large lower transfers that we created. If you, if you increase the size of your bottom end, but you don't increase your intake duration, some cases you can end up with less power versus more. So we will see. I hope this saw works well for Caleb. I picked this saw up just for him. It was a local saw and uh, I would love to have this saw friends, but honestly, I would rather just send this to a buddy and have him play with it. And uh, that way we know if this saw is good or no good. Remember that 440 I built like four years ago on the channel? If you go back, it's there. He has that saw and he's had it for about three and a half years and it's still cutting wood every day. It's a full-time daily production cutting saw and it's still running. So um, we even took it apart once one time on the WhatsApp one night just so I could have a look at it and it was still good. We threw it back together and it's still running today. Okay, next up, next time you guys see this saw, probably this week, I'm going to put the rest of the saw back together. And when I get a moment, friends, I need to build a pipe for this. Caleb doesn't have a pipe saw, and uh, he's mentioned many times that he wants a pipe saw, so I'm going to build a pipe for this thing, and uh, hopefully add a little bit more performance to an already what I think is going to be a strong build. Anyhow, thanks for coming to hang out, I appreciate everybody, and let's get to a question of the day. Give me a second, and I'm going to go check my emails. Today's question of the day comes from Callum Anderson. How's it going, Callum? Callum just rebuilt a Husqvarna 390 XP. I got one on the bench here somewhere. Right here, friends. There's a, uh, that's a 385. Same saw, though. He rebuilt a 390 XP with a big bore highway top end kit. He said the saw is super strong. He's wondering if he should port it. The timing numbers are, and I wrote them down. Uh, exhaust roof is 97 after top dead center. 30 degrees of blowdown. 
and the intake is at 150 degrees total duration. He's wondering if he should port it. Well, Callum, I would say that those timing numbers are pretty spicy. Um, I would maybe add, you could get away with adding three degrees or six degrees of total duration to your intake timing. Maybe run it at 155, 156. The exhaust roof at 97 is already plenty hot. Um, I would expect to see that around 102, 100, somewhere around there. 97 is pretty spicy. 30 degrees of blowdown is pretty long, but if the saw is running good, I would leave it. Um, honestly, Callum, I would leave that saw the way it is. If you wanted to go in there, you could widen the exhaust a little bit, the exhaust port, hog out the lower transfers, leave the uppers the way they are, and maybe add just a hair intake timing, throw the saw back together and run it like that. Um, but honestly, with timing numbers like that, and you said it already runs pretty strong, um, it's pretty good. You can adjust the sizes of the ports and the shapes, but honestly, those timing numbers are plenty spicy, other than you could add a little bit more intake timing. Anyhow, Callum, I hope that helps. Not every saw needs to be ported. Um, some saws are just really strong, and if that saw's strong, I maybe would just leave it, maybe put a good pipe on it. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.